Then I went to see 10 Cloverfield Lane, which... Uh, I'm so conflicted about this because I was honestly, throughout this film, I was so tense. I was just staring at my screen, my screen, the cinema screen, I don't own the cinema unfortunately. Um, I was staring at the cinema screen like, oh my god, and I was constantly just like, Egh. I was gripped, definitely was gripped. And it's basically kind of like a bunker movie, so this woman, she's running away from something at the beginning, and then she crashes her car, and then she's in this underground bunker this guy's like oh I saved you you have to stay here and she's like okay and he doesn't let her out and she's like hmm am I really being saved is he lying to me and it's all very kind of suspicion and all this all this stuff and I was very very tense but I felt like they gave it up too quickly as in the guy that has has her kind of not kidnapped but like the guy that she's staying with in the bunker he starts to be a bit creepy like too soon I feel like if he started off to be quite nice and then just like towards the end started to be a bit mm, like I thought it should be a slow build rather than just like creepy like at the beginning I thought like it would have been much more effective and also they had like a sci-fi twist towards the end that was just didn't work for me. So the next movie that I saw was Hitchcock Truffaut which is a documentary about the meeting between Alfred Hitchcock, <laughs> Hitchcock Alfred Hitchcock and Francois Truffaut, who are both very famous filmmakers. Hitchcock obviously famous for his horror and thriller films like Psycho, Rear Window, The Birds, all of that stuff, and Francois Truffaut for a film called 400 Blows, which is very good. Um, and basically they met and Truffaut wrote a book about Hitchcock and about the kind of art of Hitchcock storytelling, his cinematic prowess really, and this documentary kind of goes into that and, and looks at their meeting um, which was recorded and filmed and it was awesome, but it also brings in new filmmakers such as David Fincher, Richard Linklater, Wes Anderson to comment on the influence of Truffaut's findings um, in terms of the way that Hitchcock would work and set up a scene and it's kind of seen as like a staple for any director and it really revolutionised how people make films and it's fascinating and as someone who is hopefully um, doing film production um, come September when I go to uni I found it so fascinating. The next one I saw was Miles Ahead which is kind of like a fictional biopic of Miles Davis, a very famous jazz musician who my dad loves. My dad is a huge Miles Davis fan, he's got like hundreds of Miles Davis CDs, vinyls, you name it, he's probably got it. Um, and he actually ended up interviewing Miles Davis which is so cool, like he met his hero and I'm just jealous. <laughs> but um, my dad's a huge fan so we went together and to be honest I was a bit surprised that they felt the need to add in so many things that weren't true um, because I, obviously my dad's a huge fan so I grew up on funny stories about Miles and cool stories about Miles and there are so so many that I don't feel like you needed to add in ones that aren't true. I feel like his life was interesting enough without having to add in this weird car chase and this story about missing tapes. I just didn't think it was necessary and it wasn't that interesting. Um, to be quite truthful, it was kind of like my dad said, a bad episode of Miami Vice. Um, but you know, I still found it enjoyable. Don Cheadle did a great performance as Miles. I just felt like the narrative of the film kind of slowed up a bit, kind of didn't really work. But apart from that, the performance was great and the bits that were true to Miles' life were really interesting. Next up, I went to see Captain America Civil War. Ah, it was so good. Ah, <laughs> I was so worried that it was going to be shit because I heard like, Batman vs Superman wasn't very good and I was really worried about Civil War that it would have the kind of same issue because they have quite similar storylines if I'm honest um, but it was just so good and I usually have a problem sometimes with Marvel movies I love the franchise, I adore Marvel and the comics and everything but I often find their movies quite formulaic and while Civil War can be said to be formulaic I mean you know it does follow kind of um, a stereotypical route and the danger was obviously not that dangerous because everyone's gonna survive because they're important characters that they need for future films but you know I thought this was quite refreshing I loved the humor I loved spider-man I really liked Tom Holland's portrayal of him I thought they got him really really right and I loved everyone interacting and Ant-Man and I just thought the tone of this was very um, original for a Marvel movie and I feel like it's one of those films where it's not 
clear who's good and who's bad. Um, there were different sides, people that agreed with the Accords and people who didn't, and you couldn't really determine who was right and who was wrong. And I really liked that, and I thought that was really interesting, and I just, I had a great time, so yeah. The next film I saw was Sing Street. Oh my god, I think, and it's only like half through the year, but I think this would be my number one probably for the whole year. A film has to be really good to overcome Sing Street. I've now seen it three times in the cinema. I went first with my dad, then with my mum, and then with my friend B. I've seen it three times and it's so good. I bought the soundtrack and I've listened to it a lot. It's so good. The best way I can describe it is School of Rock meets Moonrise Kingdom with like a sprinkling of Son of Rambo. And if you haven't seen any of those three films, first of all, go do that. And then go see Sing Street. But those three films are amazing and I think if you just mesh them all together of course I'm going to love whatever comes out of that. But basically it follows um, a boy growing up in Ireland in the 80s and he kind of starts a band to impress a girl and it's just so funny and it's so good and all the music is amazing and what I love is it uses music that I grew up on because my dad is a huge fan of like music like that so kind of the Cure, Duran Duran, all the kind of 80s stuff I really enjoyed and I loved how you could hear that music and then they had the original score which is kind of the band's music so you could hear the music that inspired them and then you could hear the music that they created and while they're similar they're so different and Oh, it was just so good and I have nothing like to fault it, it's just, it's amazing. Please, please, please go see it. Then I saw X-Men Apocalypse, which don't get me wrong, I love the X-Men franchise and I have fun seeing Apocalypse, I love these characters and Quicksilver is my everything and I loved his scene in this um, movie. It's kind of like an extended version of his scene in Days of Future Past, but I didn't mind because I just love that scene and Evan Peters made, makes me happy, so. But I feel like Apocalypse was built up to be this huge villain and um, in the beginning of the movie he's like turning things to dust and you're like oh shit and then in the big battle he doesn't do that to any of the X-Men like no one important dies and I feel like the stakes were built up and then nothing really happens. <laughs> I mean Oscar Isaac's good and stuff and it's enjoyable but I feel like for a movie that oh god was so hyped nothing really happens and I didn't like the fact that Apocalypse doesn't really have a motive, he's just like, I'm powerful, the world is mine. And it's like, well, that's just a bit boring, to be quite truthful. And I didn't really feel like the new additions were fleshed out enough for me. I mean, I liked Jean Grey, I thought Sophie Turner was decent, and I liked Cyclops, but I didn't really feel like they had any chemistry, but you could see that's what they were trying to do. And I just didn't really feel like I knew any of those characters, the way that I felt like I knew the characters coming out of X-Men First Class. So it was a bit underwhelming, but I did still have fun, and some of the big battles were really cool on the big screen, but I feel like they could have done a lot more with it. It, to be quite honest but it was such a long film that they didn't really have any room so yeah I feel like they kind of prioritized the wrong things but um, I still enjoyed it anyway so yeah. Then I went to see Me Before You which I really wasn't planning on seeing because I thought it looked a bit weepy um, as in like I saw the trailer and they gave away everything and I just thought I know what's gonna happen in that it's gonna be really sad and a bit cringy and they've got all Ed Sheeran songs on the soundtrack like don't get me wrong I love Ed Sheeran but I just feel like some of these films try to emotionally manipulate people into liking the film through Ed Sheeran's music and like emotional music and I'm like if the film's not gonna make me cry without the music just adding a sad song on top is not gonna give it the power it needs to make me cry just you know food for thought there. I actually ended up really enjoying it I liked Amelia Clark a lot um, in her role I think a lot of people would have thought that she, her character was a bit annoying but I thought she was really cute and I've never seen Game of Thrones so I really liked um, her in this and Sam Claflin was good as always and it has Neville in it Neville! <sighs> I was really happy with that. I just he came on screen and it just took me like a second to just twig and I went And I need to be really quick here because my camera's about to run out of battery. But the last film that I saw was The Nice Guys with Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe, directed by Shane Black, who did Iron Man 3. It was so good. The soundtrack was killer, the plot was amazing, it was so 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 funny, and I just really had a great time and I highly recommend it. Go see it, you'll love it, it's amazing. Thanks so much for watching this video and please leave your comments for films that you liked and your opinions on what I've mentioned and just discuss with me because that would be cool. And I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!